time to play one of our favorite games here on The Jump, right out of the gate, too. Something, <laughs> nothing, or Ooh. everything. So let's start in Los Angeles. The Clippers lost by 51 points yesterday. I repeat, the Clippers lost by 51 points yesterday. They were without Kawhi Leonard, who was out. Here is Paul George after the game. I take full responsibility. Um, you know, it's a tough game coming from Christmas. Um, you know, I enjoyed my Christmas day. I enjoyed my Christmas day yesterday. Today just popped up on me a little too fast. Um, I'll take full ownership for that, um, of coming out and being prepared to play today. Um, be a different situation come uh, next game. And, uh, you know, we'll be ready. Make sure um, our group will be ready. Okay, so Coach Fizz. Trailing by 50 at halftime, losing by 51 overall. Is that something, <laughs> nothing, or everything? Oh, that's something. You can't just discount losing by 50. I know Coach Lou was digging deep into that bag, trying to pull all his tricks out to get the team riled up and, <laughs> and get them moving. But that, that turkey was sitting on them and all of those fixings and everything. So, you know, I think the good thing about this is Paul George took ownership of it. And he had an opportunity to show that he could lead this team without Kawhi, and he missed that opportunity. He'll probably have it again, but that's why I think it's something, because he has to be able to take this team and carry it for stretches during the season, and that's going to be very important. Look, I, I think it's nothing. I, I, I understand it looks terrible, um, but... Uh, you know, this is a, it's the third game of the year. They've looked great so far. They didn't have Kawhi. And, I, you know, when Paul George basically, he just flat out said, look, I enjoyed my Christmas. I enjoyed it a little too much. Okay? It sounded like he got back from, <laughs> back from Denver and had a good time, right? And, and, and to me, it's like, look, you own that. And he, I like that he said I own that. I like that he said we had a little Christmas hangover there. And, and this happens. Like, when you get down real early, th this game was out of hand in the first quarter. I mean, I kept seeing the scores, and I was like, ooh, that looks really bad. And usually, if you close that gap by halftime, there's a chance it's not going to be ugly like that. But, I mean, the second half was even. I don't know. I'm trying to find a bright side for him. I think it's nothing. I think it's just Good a ball race coach. kind of game. Good job, coach. <laughs> I'm going to go in the middle here between you two. I'm going to create a new version. I know it's something, nothing, or everything, but I'm going to go snuffing, yeah. okay? Snuffing. Because it is a little bit of something, and it's kind of a little bit of nothing, okay? Right, right. Because it is the third game of the season, yeah. but my God. You can't be embarrassed like that at home. Right. I don't care if you had a Christmas hangover. I don't care how much turkey you had, how much ham you had, how many fixings you had. Listen, there's not enough tryptophan in the world to make you sleepwalk through that game the way they sleepwalk through that. So that is an embarrassing situation. So I'm going to go and create a new category and call it snuffing. <laughs> All right. Next, the Brooklyn Nets suffered their first loss of the season to Charlotte last night. They also lost starter Spencer Dinwiddie, who went down with a partially torn ACL. We'll get to Dinwiddie's injury in just a moment. But first, Fizz, is the loss to the Hornets last night something, nothing, or everything? To Brooklyn, it's only something because they lost Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, he's a critical piece to their overall success. He's a guy that plays next to Kyrie. He's a guy that can be on the court without Kyrie running the team and getting people shots and getting his own baskets. So he's been an integral part of what they do. And so I do think that is something. because they lost him. Overall, the actual game, I don't think is a big deal to them at all. It is something to the Charlotte Hornets, who's a young team. Coach Borrego did a great job in winning that game. Yeah, I I'm going to say something just because of the injury to Spencer, because I, I think he's one of those underrated pieces that if you've got a guy who's okay playing next to to Kyrie Irving, right? Who knows how to do that already? Mm -hmm. Plus, Kyrie has not always been the most durable player. He's going to miss some time throughout, you know, throughout his career. He's he's very rarely gone a season without missing at least a few games in a season. Mm -hmm. um, and so you lose a, a, somebody who is has been a leader for you when when Kyrie's been out. So I think that's something. Um, I'm curious what that does to their thinking on trading for James Harden. I know that they have explored that. They've had conversations. They haven't gone very far, um, but. James Harden would theoretically play next to Kyrie Irving, so just, just say it. 
<laughs> I, I, I'm in agreement with you guys. I'm going to go something because of the Dinwiddie injury. The game is not really a big deal. I mean, right. you're going to lose one over 72 games. Not that big a deal. But uh, they do have ball handling issues now when you think about it, right? After Kyrie Irving, Spencer Dinwiddie out. Now you're looking at guys like Tyler Johnson, right? You're looking at guys like Bruce Brown who are nice players and who can handle the ball a little bit. But I don't know if you want them necessarily to be your secondary ball handlers on a team with championship aspirations. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they proved me wrong. But I do think that they would probably look to add a player in that vein, right, that can help them there. Now, Ramona, let me ask you this about Dinwiddie's injury. Like, what are the possibilities? Do they explore a deal for, you know, a secondary ball handler? It doesn't have to be James Harden. Does that, is that something that's on the table? You know, I think right now you I think right now you roll with what you got. I mean, you mentioned they have other guys that that can play in that role. Um, it's just that Spencer was mm -hmm. the best of them. And so you you got it's got to be next man up and you see where you where you're standing. Um, but I do I think that you're now in evaluation mode. You see what what do we have? And what I've seen from the Nets so far in the first couple of games of this season is they look like a team that can win the Eastern Conference, and they look like a team that can win the entire thing if, they, if they're healthy at the right time. Um, I think Kevin Durant's answered a lot of questions about how he was going to come back from that Achilles injury. He looks great. Um, and so if I'm the Nets, like, this is evaluation time. I, and and do, do the backups that I have here. Is the next man up? Is he good enough? If, and if not... You got a couple of months to figure out what you're going to do about it, but um, I, you know I don't know. It does, I don't know if it changes their thinking in terms of James Harden. They, they can offer what they can offer, right? And Spencer Dinwiddie would have been part of that package. It's hard to trade an injured player, um, but that it does bring Brooklyn back to the forefront, at least in my mind, as a team that should look at a trade for James Harden. Because if you're in win now mode, you don't want to let an injury like that derail you. You know, an NBA 2K coach, you can't trade injured players. But you, I guess in the league, you could do it. But what do you make of what Ramona had to say there? No, I think she makes some great points there. But I'm going to tell you, it's a kid that I coached there, Tyler Johnson, who you better not sleep on. Tyler is fearless. He's tough. Mm -hmm. He guards the ball. He's played backup point guard for us when I was in Miami. He can handle the role well. Uh, he's been seasoned and coached. Uh, in multiple places now. So I do think they have a good, good safety net in Tyler Johnson and a guy that's going to compete. And remember, the ball is going to be in Katie's hands and Levert's hands. Simple as that. And so if a guy can get it over half court, get the ball to the right guys, and they can guard the position, they're a great filler for the Nets. Yeah, and I think that that kind of third role now, I mean, Dinwiddie was kind of feeling that out. He didn't have a, a huge scoring load, at least through the first couple of games of the season. But I think you know, you look at Karis LeVert, who's going to have to carry that burden now for sure. The thing about this is Paul George took ownership of it, and he had an opportunity to show that he could lead this team without Kawhi, and he missed that opportunity. He'll probably have it again, but that's why I think it's something, because he has to be able to take this team and carry it for stretches during the season, and that's going to be very important. Look, I, I think it's nothing. I, I, I understand it looks terrible, um, but... I, you know, this is, a, this is the third game of the year. They've looked great so far. They didn't have Kawhi. And, I, you know, when Paul George basically, he just flat out said, look, I enjoyed my Christmas. I enjoyed it a little too much. Okay? It sounded like he got back from, <laughs> back from Denver and had a good time, right? And, and, and to me, it's like, look, you own that. And he, I like that he said I own that. I like that he said we had a little Christmas hangover there. And, and this happens. Like, when you get down real early, th this game was out of hand in the first quarter. I mean, I kept seeing the scores, and I was like, ooh, that looks really bad. And usually, if you close that gap by halftime, there's a chance it's not going to be ugly like that. But, I mean, the second half was even. I don't know. I'm trying to find a bright side for him. I think it's nothing. I think it's just Good a job, race coach. kind of game. Good job, coach. <laughs> I'm going to go in the middle here between you two. I'm going to create a new version. I know it's something, nothing, or everything, but I'm going to go snuffing, yeah. okay? Snuffing. Because it is a little bit of something, and it's kind of a little bit of nothing, okay? Right, right. Because it is the third game of the season, yeah. but my God. You can't be embarrassed like that at home. Right. I don't care you had a Christmas hangover. I don't care how much turkey you had, how much ham you had, how many fixings you had. Listen, 
There is not enough tryptophan in the world to make you sleepwalk through that game the way they sleptwalk through that. So that is an embarrassing situation. So I'm going to go and create a new category and call it snuffing. <laughs> All right. Next, the Brooklyn Nets suffered their first loss of the season to Charlotte last night. They also lost starter Spencer Dinwiddie, who went down with a partially torn ACL. We'll get to Dinwiddie's injury in just a moment. But first, Fizz, is the loss to the Hornets last night something, nothing, or everything? To Brooklyn, it's only something because they lost Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, he's a critical piece to their overall success. He's a guy that plays next to Kyrie. He's a guy that can be on the court without Kyrie running the team and getting people shots and getting his own baskets. So he's been an integral part of what they do. And so I do think that is something. because they lost him.